In this mini lecture, I'm going to discuss the models and approaches of connected learning, different ways of explaining connected learning in different contexts. Connected learning is supported in an environment that encourages strongly shared culture and practices, varied ways of contributing, high standards, and effective ways of providing feedback and help. Connected learning environments provide a context where a community of active learners can share, curate and produce resources and co-create knowledge on a topic of common interest. Although not dependent upon technology, connected learning is enhanced by social technologies. Social technologies are online connective tools and applications which enable users to create connections to other people, sources of information and content. Most common social technologies are social media, like social networking tools such as Twitter and Facebook, content publishing tools like blogs and wikis, and social bookmarking or curation tools such as Pinterest or Digo. However, we can't forget mobile technologies such as the mobile phone and the tablet which have allowed these social technologies to be accessible anywhere, as long as we have an internet connection. There are two ways of interpreting the term connected learning. We have connected learning with a capital C and a capital L, and connected learning with a small c and a small l. The first interpretation, connected learning with capital letters or the proper noun, is represented by the work of Mimi Ito and her colleagues who work at the Connected Learning Lab in the United States. This is a specific way of understanding connected learning based upon their developed connected learning framework. This interpretation of connected learning explores how young people and specifically marginalised youth who have become disengaged from school and formal education might access more meaningful and authentic learning opportunities. The second way of interpreting connected learning with small letters is in a much more general sense. This interpretation looks at how networked learning using social technologies might be experienced by learners across a much wider range of contexts, including formal and informal learning, online in learning, in libraries, higher education, learning in makerspaces, and many other places and contexts. There are many similarities between the two interpretations. And one of the biggest ones is that both explore how people learn in open environments. An example of a closed environment is most commonly seen in a regular school or university learning context. You've got learning that happens from teacher to student, student to student, and student to teacher. Resources are mostly read only. The student consumes the information and does not contribute their own thoughts or knowledge. And when assessment is completed, generally the only audience is the teacher or person assessing the work. Connected learning suggests that the learning environment should be open. This means that instead of learning happening only within the four walls of the classroom, there is opportunity for the learner to interact, learn with and learn from people and information resources from beyond the classroom. It doesn't mean that everything happens in the open. Obviously, there are some times when it's appropriate to maintain a closed environment, but learners and teachers, in fact, in connected learning, everyone is really considered a learner, perhaps on different paths, have the opportunity to connect with many others and with social technologies, those other people and resources may be anywhere in the world. It's a radically different way of conceiving education. Here's an example of connected learning, little c, little l. You can go to this YouTube uh, address and watch this video of a boy who is trying to learn how to do an ollie on his skateboard. The boy is analysing and reflecting his skateboarding technique, which he's able to do because he's recorded it. But also, he's able to do this because he's posted it on YouTube. He's able to get advice from others. At this point, he has 131 comments. 
and the video has been watched 6,521 times. It would obviously be useful for other skateboarders to watch the video also, if they're wanting to learn or improve their ollie when skateboarding. Another very well known example of this type of learning is Bow Drill Boy. These are classic examples of connected learning because these boys are following their passion and using the affordances of not only social media but digital technology to help them solve their learning problems. Without technology, they would not have been able to either film themselves working to watch it back and examine their own technique, nor upload the video and share it so widely with others with the intention of getting feedback and advice. Before I go on, I just want to explain the term affordance. We use this term all the time, but it actually has a quite specific meaning when describing technology. Affordances describe what you can do with technology and what the technology offers you. This could be what the designers originally intended as well as what the user has ended up using it for. Is it an iPad or is it a cutting board? The affordances of social media is that it allows us to publish to a very wide audience, which the average person could never do previously. It also allows us to communicate back and forth with others. But another affordance of social media is that it allows advertisers to find out what our interests are and to align their ads to what they think we want to see. This particular affordance was not necessarily what the designers of social media initially imagined when they created the technology, but it's an affordance that exists and which has been taken advantage of by many people to make plenty of money. Returning to the skateboarding boy and bow drill boy, these are examples of connected learning in a broader sense. However, they also share some of the principles of Ito et al's framework. The kids in these videos are driven by their interests. They really want to learn how to do an ollie or to make a fire with a bow drill. The learning is production centered because they've created videos to help in the process of their learning and they're connecting with others who have a shared purpose. That is, others who are interested in skateboarding and bow drills. Making these videos is definitely learner oriented. They'll not only learn the skills of skateboarding or bow drill fire creation, they're also learning about creating video, publishing online and potentially interacting with others online. One thing these examples don't demonstrate is relationship building. They aren't necessarily developing ongoing connections to support their learning through this one instance. They're asking for help, perhaps receiving it, and unless they then pursue a conversation with one of the commenters, that will be the end of the learning episode. If these boys created future videos showing how they had incorporated the feedback, what they were doing as a result of achieving these skills and so on, perhaps it would be a larger connected learning experience. This diagram demonstrates all of the different aspects of a connected learning environment from the connected learning framework perspective. So you can see that the young person's personal interests are in the center. And the idea of connected learning, capital C, capital L, is that we can use the passion and peer relations that the young person has to connect these different contexts of their life so that the learning they undertake is more meaningful and the students or the learners feel more a part of the process. Learners are encouraged to take what they're learning as a result of their personal interests and draw upon that to develop their skills and abilities within different settings including school and possibly their career or civic lives. Here's a larger infographic really exploring and explaining the different features of the connected learning framework devised by Ito et al. When you map your connected learning environment, you'll be looking at what aspects of the connected learning framework are present or perhaps what aspects could be developed. These are some of the features you'll be looking for. For example, is the learning production centered? Is it interest based? Do the learners have a shared purpose? Is the learning environment openly networked? Is there a focus on developing or, or leveraging peer culture? Is there a focus on academic 
or general learning, a focus on developing knowledge and skills in a particular area. Of key importance is that you identify a community that is focused on learning and situated in an environment that enables connected learning. There are many community groups out there and many groups which use social media and technology, but not all of them are connected learning communities. By analysing the community and the environment in light of the key principles and priorities of connected learning, you should be able to determine whether or not the group is exemplifying a connected learning approach or whether it is a social group aimed at supporting and providing networking for people or alternatively a commercial interest group where the aim and the goal is to bring people together to support and create profits for a particular commercial interest. These latter are not necessarily connected learning approaches. There are loads of resources available to help you see the connected learning framework in use across many different contexts. The Connected Learning Research Network site is the hub for all of their work, and you can see what research is happening and what people are doing in schools, universities, and the community in terms of connected learning. I would also suggest that you follow their Twitter accounts, the Connected Learning Lab, and the Connected Learning Alliance. These two, are fundamental resource portals if you're looking for information about connected learning and in particular with young people. The following quotes really sum up the core principles and core gist of connected learning according to Ito et al and this connected learning framework. Connected learning is realised when a young person is able to pursue a personal interest or passion with the support of friends and caring adults and is in turn able to link this learning and interest to academic achievement, career success or civic engagement. Connected learning also draws from educational efforts that value and elevate the culture and identity of non-dominant children and youth. These include youth development and media programs, culturally relevant education, and civic and participatory learning that draws from and supports the interests and voices of diverse youth and their communities. You can see from these quotes that Connected Learning, capital C, capital L, focuses on and is really interested in exploring the learning of young people, and particularly young people who are disengaged or perhaps marginalised. This social justice focus differentiates it from many other learning approaches. So moving away from the specific connected learning framework, let's look at the idea of connected learning in general. This is a mind map that Dr Mandy Lupton has designed, demonstrating how connected learning environments might look in settings beyond those explored in the connected learning report. You will be able to see that most of the features of the Connected Learning Framework by Ito et al. are present in this mind map, but that it broadens many of the elements to make them more adaptable to a wider range of learning groups and settings. You may find this mind map is also useful when analysing a potential connected learning environment. The environment will almost certainly not have all of these features, but it will need to have at least some in order to satisfy the criteria of a connected learning context. This unit has been planned around these elements so that you can experience and hopefully understand connected learning in action while the unit progresses. The unit has a strong emphasis on social learning and exploratory hands-on and inquiry focused learning. The idea of interest driven, driven learning is expanded to include individualised, customised and self-organised learning. In this unit, we demonstrate principles of connected learning by drawing upon many different resources. And when you discover, create and share resources within the group, we are all developing a participatory culture. The learning is aimed at being immediately applicable to your real world and professional context. And the flexibility in the assessment 
is to ensure that you're able to follow your own professional interests. The subject doesn't mandate what areas your connected learning community or personal learning network needs to expand into. And in this way, it's situated within your own personal learning experience. It's taking advantage of the affordances of social technologies. We could never do this subject with everyone spread all over the place geographically without the social technologies to connect us and allow us to communicate and share with each other. And this type of learning is actually quite innovative within the traditional university model. During this subject, you're going to be involved in active learning. You'll be creating, collaborating, curating, reflecting, inquiring, and sharing with others. Within a connected learning environment, there are many different ways that learners can engage with each other and with information and resources. There are many ways that knowledge can be generated socially, and this map will be useful when you're mapping your connected learning environment because you'll be able to analyse the environment and evaluate it to see whether or not these types of activities are occurring. If none of them are happening, then you would have to consider that perhaps it is not a connected learning environment that you're looking at. Remember, as you're looking for your connected learning environment, it doesn't matter if it's an informal environment, a hobby-based environment, an interest-based environment, or whether it's part of a formal education environment. If you'd like to learn more about connected learning in higher education settings, and even if you aren't focusing on that in particular, I'd recommend you check out Dr. Mandy Lupton's blog, Teaching in the Wild. She has a lot of great information about how connected learning might take place in different learning contexts. One of the models she suggested is the quadrant model. This model looks at how you can combine closed and open environments in connected learning experiences in formal education. The idea of combining closed and open environments is a really interesting one. Jessie Stommel says, we need to consider what are the affordances of a closed door. His quote suggests, sometimes we do need to close our classroom door, whether virtual or literal. We should take these moments as opportunities to talk to students about the rhetoric of the room. What are the affordances of a closed door? What different stuff can happen inside a closed space? And who gets left outside? Can we imagine a space with a closed door but open windows? What he's saying here is that there might be times when learning happens best within a closed environment, and that while some amazing learning happens in completely open environments, there are also times when we might close the door, or in fact close the door but open the windows. Open and closed environments are on a continuum. Mandy's quadrant is another way of understanding this. We have lots of open learning happening in this subject, on Twitter, on the OpenCL website, and you'll be publishing your learning publicly on your blogs. But we also have some quite closed parts of the course. The readings which are held in databases are in that walled garden of the library because there are legal and financial binds on us sharing these publicly. However, any readings and resources that aren't in those databases are openly accessible to you and anyone else who comes across this site, whether they are a student of QUT or not. We also have times when the doors are shut, but the windows are open. This is the password protected Padlet space. I made the decision not to have these publicly open because I understand that although we want to learn socially, it's a big leap to go from the closed blackboard environment to completely on open online environments. And so these Padlets are where you can feel confident to ask questions and share resources, knowing that only your peers and myself can view what's in them. This is like a halfway point between closed and open. Connected learning is pushing the boundaries, modeling how learning can happen even within formal education environments that is closed and open, accessible to all, and yet particularly accessible to students in a formal learning setting. Connected learning is rooted in the active participation of students, instructors, advisors, and collaborators, offering the ability to connect courses, people, and resources 
to develop unique personal learning pathways. This is yet another way of understanding connected learning. And it's from an EduCause article, Seven Things You Should Know About Connected Learning. EduCause is looking at connected learning in higher education. So it takes connected learning from a little bit of a broader perspective, looking at using personalized learning, using, an, using open web resources, and a mixture of closed and open content. This map, developed from the work of Mandy Lupton, compares the broader interpretation of connected learning as suggested by EduCause to the principles of connected learning put forward by Ito et al. EduCause's interpretation of connected learning has a focus on being production-centred by encouraging learners to assemble, construct, organise, orchestrate and curate material using new technologies. It offers opportunities for interest-driven learning by planning the pedagogy and the curriculum to be customised and individualised. And it recognises that everything is interconnected through its connected and integrated approach. There are different learning pathways which offer many different points of entry to the learning and different modes and methods of learning. The learning is situated in a digital ecosystem which amplifies learning opportunities, allowing formal and informal learning to be openly networked and shared widely with other learners. Further readings are available on the Connected Learning Padlet at this address. Thank you for joining me in explaining the different approaches and models of connected learning. And hopefully this brings some clarity to a complex and interconnected concept.